yo, I know I keep saying it to you, but you really need to get your life right and focus on your relationship with God. Yeah, I know, but the way you live is good for you, and I'm happy for you. But I don't have to live the way you do. I believe we need balance. Balance? Oh boy. That was a conversation I had with someone close to me a few years back. It's one of those conversations that I can never forget. Not because it was dramatic or filled with a lot of back and forth, but because I knew that I had a long road to travel if I was going to reach him. The thought of balance is one that can go deep. It is a thought that seems very rational. And so the majority that feel this way about balance think it's harmless and even like common sense. You can hear that word balance being thrown around often. People say they need to find balance. People saying that they are trying to bring the earth in balance, their work and personal life in balance, their family life and social life in balance. Many things. There's a lot of those type of sayings, but the majority don't know where these thoughts come from. It's just one of those things that people have adopted. But this thought of balance is highly esoteric and it needs to be explained so that those that have adopted this thought are able to understand its true meaning and then with knowledge they can choose for themselves if it is a way that they want to think or not. Because it's not just a simple word, it's a way of thinking. It's a thought and this thought actually comes from a symbol. That symbol is yin yang and it's going to be broken down to you in this video. Let's begin. The yin yang symbol can be seen almost any place one looks. It is used in logos, on book covers, in the New Age movement, in the martial arts, by Wiccans, and so forth. Yin and Yang are considered to be opposites, opposing forces. This symbol is Chinese in origin, from the Taoist tradition, although its meaning has extended throughout the world. Two identical shapes fit snugly inside a circle. These shapes are formed by an S shape that divides the circle, and the fatter part of each shape is a dot. The shapes are drawn in opposing colors, most often like this one, black and white. The shape of the yin yang represents the interaction and interplay of opposing forces. In more simpler words, the yin yang describes how seemingly opposite or contrary forces tend to balance each other in the natural world. The yin is the black side. Yin represents eternity, dark, feminine, left side of the body, etc. The yang is its opposite in white. Yang represents history, light, masculine, right side of the body, etc. Yang is male, positive, and represented by the sun. Yin is female, negative, and represented by the moon. The dots inside the fatter part of each shape borrows a color from its partner, and it signifies balance and harmony despite seemingly opposing forces. The symbol itself dates back at least to the 4th century BC and has been identified with Eastern philosophical religions of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. In the Western world, it has long been adopted into the symbolism of myth, magic, astrology, and witchcraft. Yin Yang started out as two separate terms to describe different geographical locations in relation to the sun. Yang was the sunny, warm side of the mountain, and on the opposite side was the yin, which was the cool, shady side of the mountain. Then from this, yin yang became a thought that was a way of seeing the universe. The early Chinese philosophers believed that the universe originated from an ultimate source. They called it the Tao, or the Great One. The Tao contains the yin yang. Tao separated into two prime principles, yang and yin, and they believe that from the many combinations of yang and yin, everything else that is in the world has emerged. So again, when you see the black side, which is in the yin, it represents many different things. It is dark, cold, hidden, submissive, the moon, and female. The yang, which is represented by the white, is the opposite. It is bright, warm, visible, dominating, the sun, and the male. Now, if you have watched the other parts of the symbol series, just the last one, part four, that dealt with the Baphomet, 
you may recognize that the Baphomet has the symbol of yin yang in it as well, because it is both male and female. Also, if you understand from part one of the History of Religion series about what paganism is, you will see that this symbol also encompasses paganism as well. The yin represents the moon, the female. In paganism, this describes the mother god. The yang represents the sun, the male, which in paganism describes the father god. You will notice that all these symbols, even though they come from different religions, from different sections in the world, they all correlate back to these symbols and ideas. The reason is because the hidden messages within them are completely satanic. In Gary Jennings book, Black Magic, White Magic, published in 1964, on page 50, he explains the yin yang like this. Another ancient magical sign called the yin and yang first appeared sometime before the third century BC in China. This emblem became a favorite of sorcerers and mystics throughout the Orient because it too embodies so many possible meanings. Yin Yang, dualism, is an underlying satanic doctrine behind Taoism, Wicca, and the New Age. According to the Taoist Yin Yang view, there is really no good or bad, only what appears to be good or bad. Right and wrong are the same. In this view, opposites are not really opposite. They just appear that way to us because we perceive through a dualistic conditioning and cannot see how opposites are really part of the whole. Witches themselves employ the demonic teachings of yin and yang. Interestingly, Wiccans do not believe in sin. Rather, wrong to them is only what one appears to be wrong. Consequently, the whole concept of right and wrong within Wicca is relative. The same is true of yin yang. There are no absolutes. What might seem wrong to one person might not appear wrong to another. And this goes back to what I was talking about with balance. I spoke about this briefly in my video about the occult symbolism of Star Wars. In terms of Star Wars, the dark side is the path one takes to achieve condemned and unnatural abilities. And we are led to believe that the Jedi Order is the light, the side of good. The entire aim of the tale in Star Wars is that of reconciling opposites. They were trying to bring balance to the Force. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. You believe it's this boy? Merging light with the dark. This is what the yin yang represents. The Star Wars series has an undeniable flavor of Gnosticism. Gnosticism is an early esoteric version of the Christian faith that believes in the importance of merging good with evil. And this is what I want to talk about first before we go into the symbol deeper. I started off with that discussion about balance. This idea of balance all comes from this symbol of yin yang. Today, people believe that they can be both, have a light side and a dark side. They believe that it is a way of being a balanced and a real person. I remember in one of the Avenger movies, Tony Stark said this. Is that a problem? I don't trust a guy without a dark side. Call me old fashioned. Well, let's just say you haven't seen it yet. That's an esoteric belief. People want to be a good person, but there are vices that they don't want to let go of. So instead of removing those vices out of their life, they have flipped it, and many have unknowingly submitted to satanic doctrine. It's actually a plague or disease of thought that spreads to the minds of countless people. It's a thought that says, I am really a good person, so don't judge me for these bad things I do sometimes. I've heard many people say things like, cheating on their spouse keeps their marriage strong or lying in a relationship is the best way to keep their relationship strong, or the only way to succeed is to cheat. There are so many sayings like this. These are actually sayings that stem from the view of yin yang, like cheating on their spouse keeps the marriage good. That's mixing the evil with good. It's a way of bringing opposites together in order to obtain what the person may perceive as good. What is actually happening is that the person is adopting satanic doctrine. They have embodied a satanic mindset oftentimes without actually knowing they are doing so. They want to balance their good with a little evil. They don't think it's possible for them to live righteously and oftentimes they just don't want to. They love their vices or sins and don't want to fully be rid of them. So they justify it by having the thought of balance. Satan deceives us by telling us that we can be both good and bad. He will tell us, don't worry about that sin. 
You're a good person. Who cares if you do this sin? Nobody will ever know. And you can be happy. It's a win-win. So then a man will risk his marriage and his family's happiness because he believes he needs to sleep with other women to be more balanced. Or a person will neglect their family and personal obligations because they want to be social and have better balance. Or a person can do a lot of evil and harm in the world, but generously give to charities to make up for their bad that they've done. All of those thoughts represent yin-yang. This feeling of obtaining balance is completely satanic and it is dangerous. It is a common thread running through esoteric beliefs, including alchemy and Kabbalah. The symbol of balance scales appears in Masonic and Egyptian symbolism. In Egyptian beliefs, it was Anubis' duty to attend to the ritual preparation of bodies, to weigh the heart of every man on the scale of justice, and to judge a man's good and bad deeds on the earth. Now we can go deeper and deeper with this, but I will not. I want you to understand the genesis of these thoughts. That's my purpose. You should understand that these thoughts and feelings are not simply harmless and inconsequential. Satan has spread a doctrine that changes the way people believe that they are judged. From this, a person lives their life trying to find balance. So with the evil that they do, they do good. Or if they're doing too much good, they need to add some evil in. This doctrine is a way of serving themselves, but it is a way of thought that provides rationalization to the person who believes it. It's easier to justify in my head that if I'm a good person, but I do a little bad on the side, I will be fine. It's even more dangerous for someone who believes in Yahshua. I've heard it many times from people. They would say, I believe in Jesus. Don't judge me because I sin differently than you. And what happens is that problem is deeper than just the sin. It's the justification and rationalization of the sin that is the real issue. The thought of balance can make people think that they can be both a follower of God and a justified sinner. Now, maybe you think I am preaching perfection, but I am not. I'm not saying we can be perfect because I am far from that. I make mistakes just as the next person. But the danger is in the justification and rationalization of our mistakes that allow us to live with them and decide we don't want to change. We just want balance. And what happens with this balance is that we are now out of the will of Elohim and living by our own will, which is actually the doctrine of Satanism. Satanism is not about worshiping Satan. It's about worshiping ourselves and placing ourselves in priority over our creator. So when this thought of obtaining balance, we are not living the way our creator desires for us. And we are ignoring that he is the actual judge and it's really his way that matters. Not the way we want to rationalize or justify. We forget that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor executioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-10. through 10. We forget that he has said this, and then we live the way we feel is right, so that we can obtain our balance. So the first thing that must be understood with the doctrine of yin-yang and obtaining balance is that it is satanic doctrine that has been subtly introduced to the masses that removes us from the will of God. We are not to be balanced. We are to be the light of the world. He wants us to serve him only. He does not want us to feed our flesh. He does not want us to live in sin. He does not want us to enjoy or rationalize our sins. So do not work to obtain balance. Work to be unbalanced. Tip the scale completely to the side of our father and serve him alone in the way that he desires for us. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in Yahweh. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Duality. Now, there's another part of the symbolism that we need to go over. Because while there is many that are deceived by the theory of balance that comes from yin-yang, there is also another part of the satanic esoteric doctrine. You remember, this symbol says a lot of different things. The other part is called dualism. I spoke about this as well in the Star Wars video. So, reconciliation is the action of making one view or belief compatible with another. In duality, the reconciliation of opposites is used to show that light and dark are both one and the same, and indeed are not different. 
Like I said earlier, the occultists believe that there is no such thing as good or evil, and that Christianity is responsible for this form of societal programming. Aleister Crowley sought to join good with evil and prove that they are both the same thing and all things are simply expressions of love and God. In his book of the law, he writes, let there be no difference between any one thing and any other thing. Dualism designates two parts and is the position that the universe consists of two opposing principles. Now, there are variations within dualism. Moral dualism would see the opposites of good and evil. Personal dualism would deal with the human being as consisting of mind and body. Religious dualism is the belief that there are two opposite powers in the universe, good and evil. And this is the concept that is always being presented to us. While the yin-yang represents balance of opposing forces, it also represents this duality mindset as well. That's why the symbol is loved by Satanists, witches, warlocks, and all those who practice the occult. The symbol communicates a very specific doctrine in a very subtle way. So let's talk about what the symbol is trying to communicate through duality. The common theme in duality is that you cannot have light without darkness, good without evil, and ultimately you cannot have God without Satan. And so a Satanist, matter of fact, it's not just Satanists, because I have a cousin who believes this, but he doesn't classify himself as a Satanist or a cultist. Certain people believe that God and Satan are the same. And it just depends on how you want to look at him, good or evil, but he's still the same thing. And duality says that though they are opposing forces, they are still the same and equal. Light was good, while dark was evil, but they're still the same thing. It's still working for the same power. It is trying to communicate that Satan is God. Now, if you watch my videos, I have often explained the goal of Lucifer. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to be worshipped as an equal with our Creator, Yahweh. And so if you have this understanding, this doctrine should make a lot of sense on why it has been created and spread. This doctrine, blasphemously, wants to place Satan on an equal footing as Yahweh. Dualism is unbiblical, since scripture does not teach that the universe consists of opposites. Matter of fact, it doesn't even teach that there is a universe, but that's another subject. But yeah, the Bible does not teach that the universe consists of opposites, nor does it affirm that Satan and Yahweh are equal and opposing forces. Yahweh, according to scripture, is infinitely greater than Satan and will eventually cast Satan into the lake of fire. This could not be done if they were equal and opposing forces. But this is a subtle doctrine that is being spread. If you pay close attention, you will see that there is symbolism of duality everywhere. Before I show you examples, I again want you to understand what is being communicated. The consistent symbolism is showing that there are opposing sides to everything. And because of this, there really is no good or evil. It just depends on the side that you choose. It is a consistent showing that Satan is equal with God, and therefore is God. It's highly blasphemous to mention, but this is the overall message that is being presented. And so you will see that there have been sides that have been created, and there is always division between them. It shows opposing forces, but all working towards the same thing. In Albert Mackey's Masonic Dictionary, he says this about dualism. It is the state of being twofold, as good and evil, for example. In the old mythologies, there was a doctrine which supposed the world to have been always governed by two antagonistic principles, distinguished as the good and the evil principle. This doctrine pervaded all the Oriental religions. Thus, in the system of Zoroaster, one of the great religious teachers of the East, we have Ariman and Ormuzd. And in the Hebrew cosmogony, the explanation of the system of the universe, we find the creator and the serpent. There has been a remarkable development of this system in the three degrees of symbolic Freemasonry, which everywhere exhibit in their organization, their symbolism, their design, the pervading influences of this principle of dualism. Thus, in the first degree, there is darkness overcome by might. In the second, ignorance dispersed by snout. And in the third, death conquered by eternal life. Okay, so you must understand that they are communicating this doctrine of the world governed by two forces, good and evil. And while this understanding bears some truth to it, the overall problem is that what they're actually doing is placing Lucifer, a created being, as an equal with Yahweh, our true creator. 
and it promotes this idea subtly at all times. And though you are not obviously practicing Satanism if you wear black or white or anything like that, that is not the danger. The danger is unknowingly accepting this doctrine that Satan and God are equals and just call different names depending on your sect or where you are from. This is a thought that is at the heart of the one world religion. And by the way, the one world religion is being accepted by the masses today. You can definitely see the effects of the symbolism in real life. This symbolism is everywhere and in many things. It's so embedded into us. In the Star Wars video, I illustrated how the Lord of the Rings used this between the wizards. The evil forces searching for the ring were black. When Gandalf came to assist in the end, he was the white wizard. Or how about in the Wizard of Oz, where there was a black witch, which was evil, and the white witch, who was good. There is white magic versus black magic. They are opposites and used in symbolism to reflect the concept of duality. It's also used in the creation of this major form of division and opposing forces that's called racism. From this understanding, we understand why we see the classification of white people versus black people. I'm not black. I'm brown skinned, but I'm classified as black. That's because of this duality that has been presented by satanic men who subscribe to this occult doctrine. They made opposing forces between races and it was very specific. You see, these things are used against us to create feelings of animosity and opposition. And we direct it at the other side but we do not realize that we are being baited into a satanic mindset of duality of opposing forces. And like they do with everything else, they have added race into it as well. This is duality, and it all goes back to yin-yang, which all goes back to a doctrine of Satan being God. I mean, I hope it all makes sense, because it really is a deep subject to try to break down. This is why when you talk to many of these fake woke people, they always sound so confused and all over the place. They are always trying to rock around the fact that they are promoting Satan as God. But it's not only the usage of black and white though. You will also see this commonly used with the colors red and blue. Like in Star Wars, Rey, who was a Jedi and good, had a blue lightsaber. And Kylo Ren, who was on the dark side, had a red lightsaber. In the movie Captain America Civil War, there is consistent showing of duality. Iron Man and his side were red and Captain America was blue. This poster even shows it with, which side are you on? This wasn't because of the color of their uniform or armor, though that's not a coincidence either, but it's because of duality. Or look at these movie posters, like for the movie, The Boss, or Warcraft, or Disney's Zootopia. You remember in the movie, The Matrix, there was a red pill or the blue pill? You will see it all the time if you have your eyes open. They say I'm a nice guy. That I only have a good side and a better side. But what they don't know is that I have another side. A darker side. A badder side. A side you don't want to be on the wrong side. Hey, honey. Did you remember to get the milk? So as I was saying, I can be merciless, ruthless, ravenous, relentless. In sports, there is more often than not the red team and the blue team. Like you will see it often in boxing fights or in the all-star games. In gangs, there's red versus blue, blood versus crips. This is duality. And with all those other examples, you will not see a more concrete example of this than when you're examining U.S. politics. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. In the presidential debates, they often wear these color codes. Oftentimes, a Republican may wear a blue tie and the Democrat wear red. This is a classic yin-yang. The off-coloring away from their party colors is like the offset dot in each shape. Like many times, if you see President Trump wearing a red tie, you will often see someone else behind him or next to him wearing a blue tie. Like I said, this is not coincidence. And this is easily proven when you see how often the symbolism is presented. Now, I am positive that there is more being communicated within these colors, like red versus blue is fire versus ice, another piece of occult symbolism. But the underlying message all has to do with duality. There are meanings behind the two colors. Like white versus black, red and blue have their own meanings as well. 
The color red is thought to convey a number of emotions that are displayed through the color. Red is associated with excitement, energy, passion, love, desire, speed, strength, power, heat, aggression, danger, fire, blood, war, violence, all things intense and passionate. Blue is associated with peace, tranquility, cold, calm, stability, harmony, unity, trust, truth, confidence, conservatism, security, cleanliness, order, loyalty, sky, water, technology, sadness. The red versus blue originated within the Egyptian pagan religion and is used today for esoteric or occult purposes. This all goes back to the principle behind yin and yang. In Egyptian culture, in the Egyptian Hall of Judgment, a departed soul meets with the gods to plead his case of 42 negative confessions. During this confession, the deceased would have his red heart weighed against the blue ostrich feather of the goddess Ma'at on a scale of justice. If his heart were too heavy, filled with iniquity and sin, then his soul would be fed to a demon and his spirit would cease to exist. If his red heart equals exactly the weight of the blue feather, Anubis would allow him safe passage into the afterlife. So from this, the red versus blue occult symbolism was conceived and is of course used often, without the knowledge of the general public. Ma'at refers to the goddess in ancient Egyptian concept of truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. This is all very deep stuff and goes much deeper than what I am explaining because I only understand it very surface level due to much reading, but there's a lot more that can be said. I will stop here and maybe provide more clarifications in the future. I want to make sure that you understand that it's not the usage of these colors that is evil, and I'm not saying that anyone who uses these colors in their art is evil or communicating something satanic. With many people, this imagery and colors are just embedded into our subconscious, and they do not realize what they are conveying. So you shouldn't go around and point fingers just because you see red and blue or white and black. The point I want to make clear is that there is a subliminal message being done to influence our subconscious. And if our minds are alert to detect this when we are seeing it, these subliminal tricks will be much less effective. Satan is not an equal with God. And according to Revelation chapter 20, in the end, he will be cast into the lake of fire. There does not need to be a balance of good and evil. The only reason that doctrine exists is because Satan is the god of that belief. He doesn't care what you do, just as long as you don't truly worship our true creator. Accepting any type of evil is rebellion against our creator, and you are putting yourself against him. If you choose to find balance, you should also be prepared for the consequence if you were wrong. You see, if I live my life and surrender to Yahweh, I run no risk. If our creator and his word were real, then I live justly and satisfying him. But if he is not real, and there really is no difference between good and evil, then I still have not risked anything. But if he is real, and I live my life away from his commands, and I live the rebellion of his will, then I risk everything. And that's what I want you to consider. I also want you to be awake to this yin-yang doctrine and all that is associated with it. When the duality symbolism is being presented, I want you to recognize it and know that you should not take any of the sides. These sides have been artificially created to create opposing forces, but each side works toward the same ultimate goal. In the real world, according to our creator, there is no real white versus black, Republican versus Democrat, capitalist versus socialist, East versus West, etc. These are all man-made sides. The only true opposition is Satan, rebelling against Yahweh, and that really isn't a side because Satan is of no comparison to the one true God. Satan promotes rebellion against Yahweh and his commands, and you must stand steadfast in opposition against that rebellion. That's the only thing that matters. So keep your mind fixed on the ways of the one true God and reject the ways of that false angel that is promoting rebellion. Remember, if you surrender to Yahweh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like and share this with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. And please subscribe to my website, truthunedited.com. 
Listen, I sincerely would like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Your outpouring of love and support truly bless this ministry and greatly assists me with carrying out these messages of proclaiming truth and exposing wickedness. Thank you for your support, encouragement, and prayers. You have been a true blessing to this ministry. I praise Yahweh for you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. I love you all.